Good evening, good people. Welcome to another 203K Tuesday. I'm your host, Aaron, the house person, and this is the place you come to find out everything you don't know about the 203K loan and learn how to use that loan to help create, build, and sustain generational wealth. All right, so I say it all the time. Y'all know it, right? That starting lineup, your 203K, your, I got to give my direction of forgive your 203K starting lineup, that point guard being your realtor, that shooting guard being your lender, that small forward, that swing man being your housing 203K consultant, that forward, that power forward being the contractor, and of course, holding down the middle, that center is the title company. So uh, again, you know, love to have the different members of the team come onto the platform in addition to, you know, people who have been through the process. But, uh, you know, it's all about you guys really knowing how to put together your team, right? And knowing what those members of the team are supposed to do. And of course, how to go through the process of interviewing said members. So today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Gerald Reese of EDP Engineers and Inspectors, all right? He is a part of that, uh, the part of your team that's the small forward, the three, that, that, that consultant that's gonna be going between you and the contractor and then the bank and the contractor, right? Protecting you and the bank's interests throughout the entire process. So give me a second, let me bring him in now. Oh, I hit it. Okay, there we go. Gerald, how are we doing today? Hey, how's it going, Aaron? Oh, man, I can't complain. Can't complain at all. This is a, uh, another lovely day to be out here helping some folks understand this process and introduce them to uh, experts such as yourself. So I'm excited. Awesome. So, I know I'm excited. We got a great day in Houston, and it's a great day to do some rehabs. You know, it's a good time for the contractors to get out there right now and get some get some productivity and some draw inspections going. I love it. I love <laughs> right. it. So um, typically well, what I like to do is just kind of jump right into the questions. Um, okay. And because through the questioning and answering process, a lot of the things that are normally covered at the, the onset of an interview will be answered. And okay. then on the back end, we'll just talk about you, um, your business, and just anything else real estate related. Cool? Great. Let's get it. All right. So uh, question number one, do you know the 203K process from start to finish? And are you active on the HUD 203K consultant list? Man, great question. Absolutely. Uh, I've been doing 203Ks for a long time. And it's really the main role of the consultant. You know, you the, the consultant is the glue of the process. You want to make sure that you understand the lender's needs, the contractor's needs, and especially the owner's needs uh, or the client. So, you know, understanding those three spaces and, you, you know, it, it, it behooves you to have to understand the process from start to finish. Right. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next question. What is uh, your 203K consultant ID number? Uh, my ID number is D1003. If you see me looking down, just I, just, I like to take notes and I tell okay. folks, y'all know, like I say, you got to always have that pen and paper ready. You never know when you get a gym. I mean, you may be able to rewind, but <laughs> just get it while you can. Get it oh, while that's you can. right. All right. So uh, when were you added to the consultant list? Wow. Uh, it's literally probably about 10 years ago, uh, probably around 2011. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm a long-term engineer and I've worked in construction most of my career. So it was just a great fit being a home inspector engineer and then, you know, becoming a consultant, 203K consultant. Well, uh, a little bit of thunder still in there because the next question is, what is your industry background? <laughs> hey, Prior hey I can go a little consultant. deeper. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, hey, and that's a that's the great segue. You know, I worked in capital project space uh, for a petrochemical company for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but also running the engineering firm the last 15 with the focus on light, on residential and light commercial. And a lot of the engineering part is a lot of rehab work, uh, additions, doing plans, uh, add-ons for, you know, foundations. So when I, you know, as we grew in the home inspection, building inspection space, the 203K program was presented to us from some lenders. And it was like, this is a great fit for us, something that fits our uh, business model. You know, we weren't going across the street to do the work. It was just a natural progression. And, and to see the value of it has been amazing. Right. Okay, good, so, good, good. All right, the residential little light commercial, okay. Um, so as far as the engineering aspect, uh, how long have you been in that particular business? Oh, wow. I like to say since I was in the eighth grade, I did a, a science fair project on engineering. It was civil engineering. I mean, it was some, you know, and I, I was just such a nerd back then. I love math and science. And then I went to a high school for engineering professions in high school. It was a magnet school here in uh, Texas. That magnet program was a big deal. And then, you know, majoring in college in uh, mechanical engineering at Texas A&M University and College Station. And then... I worked my whole career. Only thing I've ever done is engineering. Now, I did, um, I went and got a master's in intellectual property at a law school, but that was because I thought I wanted to be a patent attorney. But uh, my career has always been engineering, uh, 25 years. And uh, it seems like I'm like taking all the knowledge that we have and scratching the surface and jumping right into this 203K program with all these engineering skills but also the skills to run those two or three K projects, gotcha. those rehab. Yeah. Those detail complex ones. Like, you know, I know, we, you know, I'm, I hope I'm not, I'm going off script, but I just can see like the one guy who knocked down the house and we saved like four peers so we could use the program, five peers maybe. And then we rebuilt his foundation peer and beam and built him a new home, his dream home using the two or three K program. And so, since you mentioned that while we're while we're there while we're here um yeah that that is one of the things again so there's, there's so many intricacies through this program that people really don't understand like the power of it so yes um can you just break down why i mean because we we got a few more questions but while we're here yeah. can you okay. break down exactly what you just said but you know just kind of strip it down a little more and make it as plain as possible okay so we had a client who wanted to, you know, they were thinking about buying a new home. Mm -hmm. uh, unbeknownst to me, one of the realtors they were working with say, hey, you know, there's a program and you found this land, it's an old house there. They start looking into the 203K program. And I was, when they called me, I was like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. I was like, well, we, we went to the house, it was dilapidated. And I just told the guys, I said, you have to have a foundation. Mm -hmm. to build from that's just one of the you know understanding the process and the program you have to have a foundation so the foundation was an old one but i told him say look we just keep pieces of it almost you know it's like uh, starting from just having the, the main pieces of the, the system and what he did was he got with the a, a designer and built his home we did the foundation design and the framing design uh he he Using a 203K program, working with the lender, you know, uh, we priced it. He had a contractor, a builder who, who, who did the complete job. We worked together and we just, once you get a meeting of the minds, we put the work right up together with the scope of work. You have a set of plans. Well, once you do that, when you go to close and you already scripted what you're going to do when you go to construction. Mm -hmm. Now, doesn't, you know, when you're starting from a slab like that, that's pier and beam, unlike a typical 203K, where when you get into construction, you open up walls and you may find some things. So you had a contingency. Well, in this case, you know, we already knew what we're working from. We're working from the bare minimum, right? So, right. The, so the contingency, although we still put it there, it was available to do, at, you know, upgrades, you know, things that they wanted to do to the home. And then at the end, they took it and just put it back in the lunch because they didn't need all of it. So it was just a great start to finish. And then when we started the draw process, they closed. Me and the builder and the owner or the client, we already had a, 
a breakdown of where we're going to take the draw, sequencing of the project. We'd already talked about it. So there's no surprises. You know, we know how much typically that's going to be because of the work write up, which is at the end of the day, I call it, you know, we're going to, it, it's sealed in stone, this work write up. When everybody signs off, this is a scope. So as we went through that, we went through the draws and there was no problem. I mean, we had some weather issues, you know, but the process because we all were on the same page when it's smooth and and i've heard had people tell me that aaron i've heard people say you make it seem so easy well it's just if you have a plan and you actually lay it out and everybody understands their role you know the gotchas if you understand the gotchas for the uh, contractor and also what the lender wants and then trying you have to help your client you know there's so many different types right you know you have the client that really wants a new home and then they're scared to go through the process. So everything that's like, maybe seems like an issue gets highlighted, but once you get them through the first part and they start seeing that progress, they start trusting it, yeah. So, and I just wanna make sure uh, you guys don't miss this point. He said right. that there was a structure. Right. And they got rid of the structure and they started from a slab. So yes. You know, and, and, and some folks have said, well, uh, well, what if, you know, can I can I build from the ground up? Right. Yes and no. It depends on the situation. Now, if there's yes. a slab, if there's an existing foundation there, yes, you can build you a brand new house. If, of course, it fits within your budget and, you know, right. it makes sense for that neighborhood and all that good stuff. But correct. Yes, you can do that. And see, you know, that's why I say this product is like the best loan product out there I, I mean the more i talk about it the more right. i talk to other people about it the more right. um you know i go through it with people i just i you can't convince me otherwise that there's something right. better i'm sorry now you know you may say home style things of that nature when right. when the market is great and you only got to put down three percent or whatever but the market's not great when the market's not great when the market is great 3.5 percent down it's always great home Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. So, okay, let's, let's, let's keep going along. All right. So okay. as far as like the two or three K inspections, um, how many would you mm -hmm. say roughly anyway, uh, you've completed, um, you know, over time? Well, you know, and that's the thing I've done probably a 40 or so, uh, two or three Ks, mm -hmm. but then I've done them in so many spaces. Like sometimes like if it's one of those, uh, streamlined, well, you know, we're really just doing inspections. You know, but those full 203Ks, which I like to specialize in, and I always like that because we get to, you know, our company EDP gets to show off our skill set. You know, we can do inspections, we can do your plans, we can do structural assessments if you need a stamp letter from an engineer. So it allows us to put our full display of services on display for a client, which most people worry about. And I, I like to go to like the scheduling, you know, how long does it take? I've seen them take. 45 to 60 days, but I've also seen them take 30 days just based on the scope of work. You know, sometimes it's just more decor and, you know, if it's just uh, what we would call cosmetic, it goes pretty fast. Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but. Uh, no, you answered it perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, now, as far as like your software, do you use like a third party software or did you like create your own or how? how right. As far as right. Your well, right now, you know, that would be a, an opportunity. But right now, we just use a third party software. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been using Genesis software. It's been a great software for us. It's, a, it's online based. We can I can use it from anywhere, upload files. So my biggest, uh, I guess, concern, it's not a concern, but what I look for in a third party platform is just ensuring that I can meet the client needs from the lender to the contractor and the client. You got three people you're always working, and the realtor. Let's not forget the realtor because that's the front end. So we we have to include all these parties. And so I need a software that allows me to talk to them quickly, get the change orders out, work write-ups, draw inspections. We want to be able to do that within a 24-hour time frame because, see, it, I love to be able to not be a bottleneck for the process. And the C contractors that are doing great work, quality work, 
you know, the last thing you want to do is hold the money, man. They're working hard out there and they're, they're taking a, a, I would say the risk of, well, they got to go do some work, put some things up and then they're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's be fair. You know, let's try to, let's try to be a team out here. And that's what we strive to do in the 203K is make it a team. That's, that's a great thing. And I'm pretty sure uh, the contractors you work with are very yeah. gracious because they definitely like to get paid uh, as soon right. as possible. So right. uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. We, we don't want you to be a bottleneck. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sound like, you sound like a realtor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Broker. <laughs> Maybe I might be one. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, so now as far as, uh, projects, what would you say is the most complicated 203K project you've worked on? Oh, wow. Yeah, the, probably the most complicated one was when a family wanted to connect their detached garage to the existing home, but they wanted to make it where they had a second story, you know, come out of the second story so they could walk to it. So hmm. it was, a, I mean, amazing project because you know it's more you, you're using a refi of the home it's, it wasn't where they were buying it was a refi client mm -hmm. but it was it was a, a it was a difficult project because we had to retrofit the home you know just the amount of engineering um, and coordination for, and then just ensuring that the second floor you know that second floor and then a, connecting it to an uh, outside uh, building or a uh, detached garage which he had converted into having a you know like a, a area for him to go play you know poker with the guys and kind of his man cave man so cave. but it was a great project so it was it, it the complexity of it is what made it um j just all the, the the engineering work and then the construction that went with it and trying to tie it in it got difficult in some space and then being in a, a coastal environment where you had to have windstorm provisions that you had to meet. So all that together made it uh, probably the most uh, complex one. Now, I've also had them where they were difficult because of the clients involved, <laughs> which, which I think is what makes you as a 203K consultant start focusing more on the relationships. You know, you can know everything from, you say, do you know the process? You can know it like, just because you know it, if you can't communicate it to the parties and then also communicate it in a way where you speak to their, their needs mm -hmm. and their issues. Everybody has a different set of issues when we talk about the lender, the client, the contractor, and the realtor. They're all, you know, realtor has the client's interest in mind, but they still have a different, in a different space. The contractor is like, okay, I got to perform. He has a lot of risk. The lender has a lot of risk. They want to make sure it's done right. You know, it's just a lot. And then the client just wants the dream home that they have always imagined. So to pull all that together, the worst one I ever had was just because I, I didn't get a meeting of the minds with all the, the different players. Okay. Yeah. That was, but that was a, that was a lesson that, you know, kind of solidified the fact that, you know, I got to make sure that everybody's on the same page, singing from the same sheet of music. So exactly. that way, you know, we one band, one sound. That's it. That's okay. it. Absolutely. All right. Um, so I'm trying to imagine the, so do you, down there, do you guys, like a lot of stuff is on slabs or do you have basements as well? No, 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 no. We, you know, we're on, we're at sea level almost. So, you know, you, you start trying to put a basement, okay. you're trying to just hit water. <laughs> <laughs> so you put the in-ground pool downstairs. Just, just go start diving. Uh, yeah, you might as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so we have shallow slab on braids, usually about four feet, three to four feet deep. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I'm just trying to picture. So he, he wanted to take uh, uh, he wanted to make an upstairs part coming from the second level of the main house and then co connecting directly to the upper level of the garage. Yes, which was converted to a man cave. You know, he had, uh, yeah, it was pretty nice, man. It was, end up be really nice. You know, it was just the guardrails and then just ensuring, you know, because you still had a limited space. Mm -hmm. When you had a limited footprint, you don't get to, oh, you get more space. And you gotta, uh, so, okay, man, you, you know, this, 
but it was it was enough room where it wasn't too congested, but it still a lot had to, you know, we had to work around the sidewalk and there are other obstructions in the yard. So, yeah. So offline, uh, you got to show me some pictures of the final product. I, I, I okay, uh, I'll have there. to send it to you. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Okay. Uh, all right. So as far as like past or current two or three K clients, um, if someone says, you know, hey, Gerald, I love what I hear, but I just want to talk to some of the people you work with to see if you really are the guy in there trying to make sure everybody's, you know, nice and harmonious and, you know, keeping this thing moving as fluidly as possible. Uh, right. Would you happen to have some folks that people can, you know, give a call, shoot an email to and just to kind of check out, you know, your story? Absolutely. And not just check out my story, but for them to really hear from people who use the program, you know, and hear the, you know, there's some, it's a great program, but, you know, buying a new home, is seems like people think it's more instant, but the time they'll get the chance to see the timelines aren't that much different, you know? Really right. right, right. So I would love to, and it would it'd be great for them to just take the stress off of the, the 203K program. It's a great program, you know? So, um, Definitely want to give them my uh, my clients. Uh, I try to have a, a decent bedside manner with them. So, you know, because I know it's a new program and, and they're spending a lot of money. So, so probably the biggest investments in their life. And I don't make light of, them, you know, so. Yeah, it's uh, definitely I, I can give them references. We've done them. I mean, I've done them in in the inner city, Houston. Um, we've we've done them along the coast. You know, uh, I've even gone out, you know, since I'm in Texas, we do a lot of work. You know, we have coastal cities like Beaumont, um, of course, Galveston. I've done them there in Beaumont, but I'm located in outside of Houston, or, or you just say Houston, which is about 110 miles from Beaumont. So we usually go at least, a, we, we'll do about 120 mile radius mm -hmm. for, for the 203K. Okay, cool. Great, cool, cool. great. Right. Right. All right. Well, I mean, that's 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 a wrap to the ten questions. Um, oh, okay. But while while I got you on the traveling piece, um, from 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 my you know my, my little bit of research here, <laughs> in addition to Texas, um, I saw that you also have Louisiana and North Carolina kind of under your wings <laughs> as well. Um, Did your research. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, are those, I mean, those are fairly new as far as those yeah. territories, but um, there you're looking to just kind of expand and, you know, as far as more of the engineering space, the 203K, what, what, what is your vision as far as going into those states? Man, thank you for that. Uh, you know, just like any business, you know, your business, mine, you know, we have a mission and a vision. And our vision has always been that we're going to be one of the premier engineering and inspection companies along the Gulf Coast. Okay. Uh, the Gulf Coast, of course, we're in Texas, but we have Louisiana. And I, you, you said, well, then you went Louisiana, then you skipped over North Carolina. And North Carolina is a little, it was just a little easier because we have a client over there, but we also want to pick up Alabama, uh, Mississippi, and then uh, later Florida. But not only do we want to do engineering, coastal work, but this 203K program is a great tool and anyone can use it. And for the rehab projects that we do, especially in hurricane regions, where when you start to have issues, you know, you got a great opportunity to take advantage of, you know, a great opportunity. And you see the rehabs in those areas, it seems like the people would be a little bit more, I guess, uh, custom or open to the program because you have to deal with that on a regular basis because of the hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, you know, re rehabilitation is really just a part of life for, for people that live on the coast. Mm. So very, very true. Um, yeah. And while, while that, that's actually a perfect segue because you mentioned hurricanes. So right. um, this was something new to me. And I guess that's because I'm, I'm more so inland. I mean, we got the Chesapeake Bay and, Right, River, Anacostia River, but you know we're not in the Gulf where crazy winds coming from the islands tend to come up there and you know cause a lot of damage. So, right. um, 
a windstorm inspection. Yes. Uh, for the folks who've never heard of it, who you know, <laughs> like me, I'm sure, never heard right. of it. Um, can you can you explain what that is and what what does that entail? Okay. Well, I'll just say this: in Texas, um, windstorm engineers represent one percent of all professional engineers in Texas. It's an additional certification that you have to get, where you have to take an exam to actually be on the roster to to be a windstorm inspector. Now to be a windstorm inspector, you have to be a licensed professional engineer first. Okay. But what you do is you focus on coastal systems and how they're installed for like roofs. There's a lot more rigor in the how you're gonna install it. You're gonna, it's gonna, well, let's just say, you're gonna have to put more nails or fasteners into it. You're gonna have to use better decking. Like um, the nail patterns are smaller, shorter spans. Uh, Windows have to have a certain design pressure rating. Uh, siding has to be installed based on certain manufacturer installation instructions and wind load provisions. The structural framing has to be installed based on a certain wind load based on IRC. So these are all just different, uh, I'd say high wind coastal codes that they want to make sure they're in. In, included in the construction so they can withstand these hurricanes. I mean, it's when we talk about sustainability, well, if you live in a hurricane region, you want to make sure that the you, you don't wipe out the houses and, and the businesses. See, what people don't think about is they wipe out businesses, which you, you, you're putting the economy on hold. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Billions of dollars. I think um, the last year, um, right. People have definitely realized uh, how detrimental it is uh, when you just come to a screeching halt. So uh, you're right. Yes, you're absolutely right about that. Man. And then the 203K program, though, for, you know, you talk about windstorm engineering. You know, if you have a 203K in the Galveston area or in Pearland, you have to, which is outside of Houston, along the coast, you're going to have to include those windstorm inspections and, and whatnot in your rehabilitation, in your rehab. If you're getting a new roof or an addition or new windows or siding, all of that has to be windstorm certified. So we do windstorm inspections on those systems with builders, re contractors, remodelers. And I try to recruit them into the 203K space. That's, um, that's interesting because it's amazing how um, situational and I guess territorial uh, things can be and how you have to adjust to that area. Because again, right. that's not something we have to worry about here uh, because right. so it, it's, it's an area called uh, Waldorf on the plate in Maryland, but whatever okay. reason, they seem to get hit by a lot of tornadoes. Um, it's, it's crazy. But um, outside of that, right. for the most part, we don't really have, you know, extensive wind damage and, um, right things of that nature. So to hear that, that is something that people have to consider when they're going right. through the renovation uh, process. Um, it's one, amazing, but two, also good to know that, you know, you got experts like yourself out there who are in position to say, hey, look, you gotta, you gotta get this. I mean, remember what happened right. You remember last year, right? You remember what happened the year before last, right? Okay, so let's yeah. make sure everything is where it needs to be. Let's make sure we got them nails at you know at the <laughs> right intervals so we're gonna keep the shingles on the roof. Let's make sure the, the side right. is, six nails per shingle. <laughs> there you go. Let's make sure the side is tucked in just just like just right so it's not getting whipped away. Uh like um uh, uh what's that? Uh Wizard of Oz, you know. Um, <laughs> and that's absolutely uh we, you gotta put hold down anchors in the corners to keep from dealing with the overturning, just like in the Wizard of Oz when that house blew on the witch and it, you know. If she had, if that if that house had hold down anchors, it'd still be there. <laughs> hey, man, that's a little uh, windstorm engineering joke. Uh. <laughs> that's right, hold down anchors. Yeah, that's, that's this is good information. New to me. New to me. Hold down anchors. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, man. So, twenty five years. You said. Really, even longer than that, because it started from an eighth grade science project. Do you remember yep. what the project was? It was just on civil engineering. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was just on civil engineering. I was just wasn't even 
application or anything like a science project. It was just on civil engineering. And I was in eighth grade. I knew I was going to go into engineering. And then I ended up not majoring in civil engineering and majoring in mechanical, but then spent the rest of my career as a structural engineer. I do, you know, most of my work is structural. So that, that's called well-rounded. <laughs> I guess. Hey, I tell you what, the whole way though, man, like just sitting here with you and talking about the 203K and I think about how, you know, people just have so many possibilities. Like you can take a house and do what we call a scramble. And, you know, a scramble is you go in there and now you want to, you don't want the kitchen that looks like a corridor anymore. You want the island. So you want to break out this wall. You're going to move this around. I've seen, when I see the builders put that together for the homeowners that are doing that, those are the happiest ones that I see because they're like, man, I'm changing my house, but I'm not going anywhere, but it's looking amazing, you know? And I'd love to see you some pictures of those as well. I'd yeah. love to receive them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I always like to tell folks, I, I call it the one of the, the most unknown unknowns, um, that the fact that it's not just for future homeowners. This product is for current homeowners as well. And, um, you know, if it's a situation where, and I use this example a lot, if you're older or you got older parents or your grandparents and just going up and down those stairs is just too much. Well, guess what? If you got some equity in your home, uh, your neighborhood has equity in it, you can use the two or three K product, right. renovate the space, maybe put an ensuite on the main level. So, Grandma, granddaddy, mama, you, whoever, don't have to keep going up and down those stairs and you can stay in your home and enjoy your home, yes. you, know, you know, for, for the duration. So, um, right. We call those toe tags, toe tag homes. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that, that's one way to describe it. <laughs> I plan on Sorry, being I don't, I don't know. That may not be in. politically correct. Sorry about that. <laughs> No, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I plan on being in this house until I'm no longer on earth. So yeah, that's right. That's 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 true. And um, you know, so even even from the standpoint of you know, assistant living, right? Right. Like you don't if you if you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to send your parents off to the center somewhere because those things are very expensive. Um, you can create a space in the home that is conducive to whatever this situation is, uh, where somebody can come in. And give right. them the care they need, and you know, and you all their or whatever you're, you're right there, you know. So, um, those those things, you know, people people have to know that it's an option, you know, and yes. not just an option, but a great option. Man, a great option. I mean, it seems like when you talk about it to some people, it really is strange to them, it, including realtors. I was like, man, it's a great program. I was like, you, yeah. you know. You see that house, they go, oh, I was looking for a new one. Well, look, in this neighborhood, look at that house. You can make it the house of your dreams. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So from what I've heard, you've done your fair share of coming in to save folks and you know help them out and um, streamline processes that for some realtors, because again, let me just back up. When I first started, trying to learn this i reached out to more seasoned realtors than i and right. the vast majority of them said oh well i had some that said i don't know about it but then the right. other ones who did they said oh man you don't want to mess with that stay away from it da, 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 da. and yeah. um i couldn't <laughs> understand why um i the more i've learned i still really don't understand why with the without maybe just the fact that they don't want to learn it. I mean, I really, I'm not sure because again, this is, it's just such a great product. Like it, it really is. <laughs> um, but with the folks that you've helped out, um, you know, I, from my research, uh, have found out that this is not a new thing to you. Um, right. I saw on, I can't remember the letters. I think it began with a K, but channel 11 news uh, a while back. <laughs> You were, you were interviewed as a, a savior coming in to help people who were getting new construction built. And they were saying that the city didn't have enough inspectors coming out there. So the builders were just getting away with highway, highway robbery and the, the people who were buying the homes were not protected. And they were in the, you know, ended up with a nice pretty house, but had some issues going on. 
And uh, you were one of those people out there, you know, coming in. Uh, here I am to save the day. So um, can, you, can you talk a little bit about that? I know it's a little <laughs> yeah, while Yeah, you know, ago. you caught me off guard with that one. You caught me off guard with that one. You really did do your homework. Um, well, I tell you what, you know, that was, I think I was in 2010, maybe. Mm-hmm. That was at least 10, 11 years ago. But yeah, I remember it because, you know, just like anything, you're in business. One of the things I'm in business to do is to help people, mm-hmm. to do some good in the world. And I'm not like this naive guy here trying to do good. But I mean, that at a core belief, I need to have that as a part of what I do. So with the inspections and, you know, working with, you know, quality is a big deal with the things that I did in my corporate life. And to be able to take that and monetize it into our our business, but also into an inspection space, well, we get to help people ensure that they get the quality that they're that they're paying for. Mm. You know, um, we don't try to make up anything. We just follow the, you know, as my dad used to say, the the book of the rules. You know, which is the specs, which is the code. Uh, if an engineer has the design plans and they say it's going to be two by sixes uh, or two by eights. And then they put in two by fours. Well, we probably have a problem, right? You know, if you're framing a house and you're mutilating the wood when you run your HVAC and electrical, and now you compromise the structural integrity of the framing, well, we need to do some repairs before we go forward. We don't need to cover that with drywall and keep moving. You know, it's things like that that a lay person doesn't know. Maybe even the superintendent may not understand. But in their minds, they just want to move to the schedule. For us, we want to protect the, the client's um, purchase. You know, they're buying that. This every time I see people buying homes, most of the time they're buying, they're they're putting everything they can into it. To, that's their biggest purchase. So it's it's probably the most important thing that they ever buy. So I take that as you know, okay, what if my sister, or my mom, or my brother. I look at people like that when I say, well, you know, I put myself in their shoes. So I just try to give them good value. And I'm just so thankful I've had a life where I've been learning these things and they actually matter and I can use them now. You know, you know, sometimes like, man, I learned all this math and, you know, I didn't know it was going to be useful, but it really is. So appreciate that. That's a little shout out to STEM. There you go. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, yeah, right. it's funny how, you know, sometimes we, as we go through things in life, we don't necessarily know if and how we'll use it later on. And kind of to see things just fall into place is is, is rewarding, um, but kind of like weird at the same time. Like, for example, one of my favorite shows growing up was This Old House. Okay, yeah. I mean, I... I, I from looking back, I really couldn't tell you why I watched it as a kid. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. a couple guys, well, a few guys, you know, taking the ugly house and making it pretty again. And right. fast forward to today where that's what we're doing with 203K. We're taking dilapidated. We're taking outdated. We're taking complete teardowns, slabs, right. yes. and you're creating something that, uh, is going to be something enjoyable for folks to live in, which, like you said, is typically the largest investment most people make in life. So, That's uh, right. you know, right. with that investment, you want it to be a good one and um, you want to feel good about it. So, um, right. man, yeah. And just yeah, like you, just like you just said, though, using your skills, I mean, look at what. You- when you said it, I was thought you were just manifesting what I see behind you. It says 203K Tuesday. I mean, you're doing it. You, you came out with an idea. And when you reached out, I was like, man, this is great. You know, it's when, a platform to talk about it. My wife doesn't like talking about it. You know, it's boring. She wants to talk about TV shows or history, the things, arts, not 203K. So to have this forum, hopefully the people that need it can get to it as well, you know. Absolutely. But you got a great deal going here. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I mean, yeah. I'm just doing um, however small or however big, I'm just doing my part to uh, impart this information because, I, right. again, I just find it so crazy that, 
a program that's been around since 61, used like it is since 78, that right. people really just still don't know. I mean, and again, the best loan product out there. I'm, I'm, I'm put <laughs> I'm doubling down on that one. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know. You got my vote. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm tallying that one too. I mean, you know, because this, again, you, you can take something and you want that new bathroom, get your new bathroom. You want that new kitchen, get your new kitchen. You want to build a, 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 a walkway from your home so you can get to your man cave in the garage with no problem. Get that done. You know, right. um, that's amazing. You know, just hey. those options. You know, and I think about when people are buying a new home and we do the inspections. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say, I'll just say um, most, of, a lot of the homeowners focus on the aesthetics, right? And thinking about, you know, on new drapes, how the floors, uh, and these are upgrades. And I'm not, you know, not throwing builders under the, you know, under the uh, bridge or anything or, or in the street, but Man, those upgrades are expensive. But in the 203K program, you're not getting them wholesale, but you're getting them close. It, it, it'll feel like wholesale versus you doing that with the with the new construction. With an old home, you can go in and get the nicest flooring, the great, great windows, and you you may not get them at you may get them at cost plus, but you want to get them cost plus and then an additional. Uh, a rider and adder and you know all of that you, you really get the value you're looking for you know and then you get the appraised value of the home come on man <laughs> it's a win-win situation and and one of the other things i like as far as and don't get me wrong new construction is great yeah but one of the things that people don't really know until they get into the house or maybe you know if they know someone who bought a new home right the house has to settle and as it settles, some things may shift around. So you got a brand new house, but you need to replace a lot of planks in your, your floors because the house settled and now you got things popping up that you didn't think should be popping up. Whereas in you taking a house that has been here, it's been sitting there for a while. And, you know, we just coming in and maybe we changing some of the floorboards before we change, you know, put new flooring on. But it, it's, I mean, the, it's settled. It's been there for a minute. You know, it, it's it's cool and it's chilling. And so you're just coming in there and, and really making it the space that you want it to be. Um, it it's just so many pluses to the tour. You, man, you see how many times I've been to a, a homeowner that new construction. And they're like, hey, I'm still on the warranty with my foundation. I got a 10 year warranty from my third party warranty company. So uh, we cut we cut we do a lot of foundation assessments. You know, taking the elevations and you know doing a couple of counts, a tilt and a deflection count to see how much movement you had in the foundation. I mean, a lot of them are on homes that are five years old, six years, seven years old. I mean, well, you can use the 203K program, maybe buy an older home. It could be 30 years old. I mean, but a lot, everything can be repaired. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, you know, being in this space, if you can have a plan and you have the budget, you can really come up, you can really get the home of your dreams. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, look, we, uh, oh man, okay. Yeah, that just, that flew kind of, <laughs> flew by. Yeah, hey man, you know time flies when you're having fun. We got to save some for the next time. There you go, there you go. <laughs> so Gerald, for folks who uh, may be in the Houston area or maybe right. you know, not too far from there in your coverage zone, um, how can they get in contact with you? Oh, absolutely. Um, you can reach us on, on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at EDP Engineers. Uh, we also have a website at www.edpinspections.com. And you can call our office anytime, Monday through Saturday. Right, we're open on Saturday till 2 o'clock, uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, eight, no, 8 to 7. Um, for you to schedule appointments or, or if you want to reach us at 281-416-9660. And if you want to send us an email, you can reach us at info at edp-llc.com. 
Uh, we love the 203K program and we love to service any of your clients along the, in the greater Houston area. All right, and EDP as an Echo Delta Paul. Yes, yes, yes. I just have it lowercase, but it's it is. EDP, okay. yes. <laughs> All right, right, that'll work, that'll work. Well, look, um, I appreciate your time. I, I, I thank you for coming on to the show and um, you know letting thank the you. world know who you are, what you do, and how you are here to help be of service because that, you know, I find that to be, um, it's, I think that I find it to be at my core, but I think that should be uh, at the core of many more people because as a whole, as a, a world family, um, I think we would go a lot further together if we had service, uh, you know, service mindset and a service heart. So um, yeah, right. thank you for, for what you do and especially the education piece because that, you know, that that's important. Man, thanks for this forum. You don't know this. I, I mean, I'm looking at it now. I don't know how long you started, how long it's been in uh, publication or how long you've had the activities, but I can just imagine a year from now, two years from now and five years from now, how your form and your platform is probably going to be at, so elevated. I'm just looking forward to your success. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. All right, guys. So that's all I got for you today. Um, Thank y'all for tuning in, and I'll see you next 203K Tuesday. Take care, Aaron. You guys have a great weekend. Thanks. All right, bye. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and ring that bell. Thanks for watching.